both incredibly talented players, and I'm sure that it won't stop here with this event, but I'm imagining they're both getting very nervous, although they are used to the limelight. So here we go with our first set of prize oh cards of the top four of the Pokemon TCG Liverpool Regional Championships. Yeah, here we go. We're about to get started. Brent looks like we're going to have a mulligan available to him. Both players to over their action, uh, active, and it looks oh, like well. Brent has <laughs> opened the Giratina V as well. Perfect start here for Brent in the top four feature match here Liverpool Regionals does have a battle VIP pass as well now Amy I want to discuss Nikolaus's deck a little bit while Brent is going to do a little prize check and grab his basic Pokemon you might have seen in the prize cards Nikolaus had the, the cross transceiver I believe he has some nice funny stuff in his deck so cross transceiver we see that we see chromatic in the list. We see Pokemon Catcher, we see Egg Incubator, and we see Pokestop. So I would like to say this is much more of a quote-unquote offensive version of the Snorlax block deck. I think, Shay, we're going to have to actually explain what some of those cards yeah. do as we go along because we will. I'll be honest, like, <laughs> I, I haven't come across some of those cards in a very long time. Now, I know a few of them, but because some of the cards are in some of the V battle decks, uh, yeah, so whenever hell, yeah. I'm teaching people how to play, they do come up. So the egg incubators there are in some of those products. So that's really the only reason I know what some of those cards do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I probably wouldn't know what most of them did if I was sat across the table from them. So you can see here, Brent knows the matchup. It's worth noting that Brent has actually played Nikolaus in uh, the Liverpool already and did uh, beat them 2-0. I was discussing with him a little bit earlier. And um, the Giratina Abyss Seeking is fantastic. You want to try and take your first KOs with Shred and then start look to V-Star as often as possible as well. Abyss Seeking is going to be fantastic for that. But you do have to be careful. You don't want to keep Pokemon in your hand because then Erica's invitation will be live. So we're just going to see the Battle of our P pass for two copies of Giratina V and a pass over to Nikolaus. And here we go with the Snorlax Master at work. The first nest ball of the turn will let Nikolaus have a look through the deck and see what might be in the prize cards and begin the Snorlax blockade the as blockade. we go in with probably a Rotom V, usually a very strong start for any aspiring Snorlax player. Your Rotom V is only used for that instant charge ability, allowing you to draw three cards your turn does end, yep. but that is, you know, what Snorlax does best. Ends its turn, yeah. not doing much, Ends. leaving air, having a little nap, letting everyone have a lovely, restful game of Pokemon. Well, it's, <laughs> it's like you get to play a free Nimona every turn, right? I mean, if you're never going to attack anyway, you might as well just uh, have a free Nimona, draw free, I mean, why not? Yeah, it kind of works as, a, as an effective extra draw supporter every turn, and no one's complaining at that. No, I mean, I definitely would not be. He's looking at Nikolaus there. And it's worth noting, the prize check there for um, Snorlax players is really impactful because you're not taking prizes. So you're going to have to work out what resources you have available. Because here, turn one Misfortune Sisters wow, here, though. Oh, that's really impactful. Misfortune Sisters, an incredibly powerful card for any stalled Ooh. deck. You get to look at the top five cards of your opponent's deck. Fun to note that your opponent doesn't get to see them. Uh, you can discard <laughs> any number of item cards you find there and then your opponent shuffles them back into their decks. They never get to know what you saw. Giving your opponent vital information of the game, but also taking away resources that could allow you to switch. As we do see the Pokestop being used and the instant charge there as well. Back over to Brent. Now that Misfortune Sister did only hit a Mirage Gate. I don't think that's going to be a card Brent will be using too much. So I don't think he minds that funnily enough. And let's see what Brent opts to do here. Now it's a matchup you have to play very meticulously here. You don't want to be playing cards for the willy-nilly. So that's all we're going to see is that Abyss Seeker. Look at the top four cards of your deck. Put two in your hand and two in the Lost Zone. And one thing I really love about Abyss Seek in this matchup, right? Because one problem when you're playing against Snorlax is having Pokemon in your hand. If you draw into them and they're in your hand, Erica's Invitation can put them into play. Or if you discard them, Echoing Horn can put them into play as well. But if you put them in a Lost Zone via Abyss Seeking, Nikolaus can't do anything about it. 
I really like that shout shape. Been putting the Pokemon into the Lost Zone is one of the only ways that the very inviting yeah. Erica could <laughs> be stopped. She's too inviting. Yeah. <laughs> She's very welcoming. She's trying to get you in there. But um, yeah, if you put them in Lost Zone, Echo in Orm can't do anything. Erica's invitation can't do anything. As Nicholas there is going to start the turn there with a Nest Ball. Going to get a Snorlax into play. And let's see what else Nicholas can do. Honestly, oh, speaking oh, of Erica, oh, here she, she comes. Is. Oh, no, but man, that's that Cramorant. Oh, oh, oh is, that, that, is that a Radzard? I, no, no, it's a Sableye. Oh, is it Sableye? I'm certain, yes, it is a Sableye. So we've got oh, Sableye, no. oh, no, and Cramorant. Oh, Erica was just too inviting, too fast. Oh. And I've got to say, Niklaus is really putting on the pressure. An early Miss Fortune Sisters, an early Erica's invitation is really scary. And now poor Sableye is Ooh. stuck in the active as Snorlick. Snorlax hits snooze on Brent's plan. Yeah, I think that's 100% correct there. And then we see the poke stop going to grab a poke again. Does get rid of Arvin and Team Yell's cheer as well. So going to keep that in mind. Uh, Team Yell's cheer is very important for the Snorlax decks mm -hmm. to keep their loop going. We're going to see a jet energy though. Wow. That's going to remove that, uh, that the saber light out of the active and get straight back on the bench. And it looks like we're going to see that Abyss Seeking again. I love to think that Jet Energy is really fun for the Pokemon. It's like, zoom <laughs> into the active. <laughs> 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 I love to think that Giratina really loved that. It was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to imagine Giratina smiling, but I think it would be on the back of that Jet Energy there. Oh, triple item. Oh, Ooh. the triple item Pokestop. Are we going to take that Pokemon catcher to get that uh, Sableye back? We are. Oh, no. Here we go, Flipper Coin and Feds, crush your opponents. Oh, but it was. Oh, here we go again! Oh, that was a four! And Sableye straight back. Oh, poor Sableye. Oh, poor no. Sableye. Sableye. What are you doing there, my son? Come Little on. Buddy, you don't want to <laughs> be there. Oh, we're going to see a Cramac as well. Nicholas flipping all the coins here. Here we go. And that was a three, so no uh, item, well, no, no such at all, I should say, there for. Nicolaus. Now, looking at the, I think that turn was pretty successful there for Nick. I'm gonna see another. Oh my oh goodness! My okay, goodness. Nicolaus. Okay, here we go. And for anyone at home Ooh. who might be wondering, uh, dice are used to yes. decide a coin flip, and heads is even numbers, tails is odd numbers. There'll be a lot of coin flips, so I thought I'd just go over that one really quickly. Yeah, I think you are. Sydney as well. Sydney. Oh, that Sydney's going to get rid of the jet energy that Brent got from the Abyss Seeking. Because Sydney lets you look at your opponent's hand. You can discard what, any two uh, stadium tools or special energy, right, I believe. Um, oh, my goodness. Uh, let me just double check. Again, that being special able, energy, yep. the, the amount of knowledge that Nicklaus yeah. has over Brent's deck oh, and no. hand now is <gasps> crazy. It's going to be a double <gasps> jet energy. Oh, oh no. no. Brent's jets have been grounded temporarily there, getting them into the discard pile. That was oh. a very... Sydney being used to great effect. Sydney, you little rascal. Absolutely. Poor Giratina. Won't be getting yeah. the zoomies anytime say, soon. Won't be getting... Oh, we see a Nest Ball being played here. Interesting. Now, is this actually going to target a Pokemon? Or is it going to fail? Because putting a Pokemon on the bench is very important. Going for a, a, a just going line. for it at this point. I mean... Hmm. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure I see the harm anymore, you know. Yeah, to be fair, having one, having one target, having two, What's not much more of a, right? yeah, not much yeah. more of a difference. If they both have a psychic energy on them, at least they yeah. can still do Lost Mine. Because, you know, uh, Brent is getting cards into the Lost Zone. Currently has four and yeah. has no real rush to get to ten. But when you do get to ten, Lost Mine is a very effective attack at dismantling the Snorlax. I think that's the thing. Brent is still okay here. Yes. Not great, but okay. Ooh. Loads of switching options. There comes one now. And Abyss Seeking, still possibility. And Cramron is kind of ready to roll now. So, you know, I quite like this board state, actually. Yeah, it's not too bad. We are going to see the Abyss Seeking again. Ooh. Uh, double path and a Zalak of News getting sent straight yeah, to the Lost Zone sorry, there. Buddy. Yep. <laughs> um, and a path to the peak as well. Over to Nicklaus. Going to start the turn off here with that Pokestop. One, two, three. Ooh, Ooh, oh, I no. don't like that. Oh, I don't like that. Dear me. That was dreadful. Oh, no. We see another Snorlax coming down there. So, And that Pidgeot getting this card is interesting. Nicklaus will have to recycle that in some way. But 
we have we saw them in the prize cards actually. Cross transceiver could be a way for Nicolas to get that Pidgeot back. Because if you play two cross transceiver mm. at the same time, oh, you see a boss orders, I should oh. say, into the Giratina V. Yes, yeah, so if you play two cross transceiver at the same time, you can get a Pokemon or support off from your discard pile, pop them straight into your hand. Yeah, I'm I, honestly though. Brent still has so many switch options to go through. Nicklaus just kind of needs to keep stay on top of the ball, really, and make sure that they're, yeah, really, really making sure that they force Brent to use resources where they don't want to. Over to Brent's turn, and a yeah, simple Guess abyss seeking. Go for it. Don't blame him at all. Going to be seeking that abyss. Yeah, There's Giratina. To that Sydney though. I wonder if that, like you said, Giratina does have a lot of switching options, but you don't really want to have two of them discarded for no real use. No. So I wonder if that will come back to bite Brent. Over to Nicolaus though, looks like is debating on what to do here. Has that hand is getting rather large. So we're gonna see the pokey start. Didn't work out too well last turn. One, two, Ooh. three. Oh, well, two that's hits. Better. That's much better. We'll take that. And it has, it has that heavy ball. So heavy we'll ball and a pokey gear. Get to consult the prize cards and take a basic Pokemon if he chooses, or if he'd like to, I should say. Always good, I find, heavy ball for yeah. knowing your prize cards as well. If you get to play it yeah. early in the game, mm -hmm. it gives a surprising amount of like game knowledge for the rest of the game. Imagine being having it in your opening hand, being like, sweet, don't need to prize check, can <laughs> just look. <laughs> yeah, no, it's super helpful to be fair if you see it early on. Reminds you of Tau Map we saw back in the day. Yeah, oh my god, another Snorlax blocking wow. the path. Yeah. I hope someone brought a Poke Flute. <laughs> yeah, that would be very helpful uh, if Brent did have a poke flute, but instead it looks like we're going to see off. Oh, we're going to see an uh, instant charge there, but Nicolaus still opting uh, what to do. Does have double cross transceiver? We're going to see a pokey gear first, though. Oh, are we going to see a supporter? Ooh. Oh, oh see a misfortune yeah, there was sisters. a misfortune sister. I think there is another one there, but I Penny. can't. Ah, oh, Penny, Penny. I don't think Penny's the one you really want to use this turn. Mm. You know, you really want to try and use Penny to absorb. Um, damage. damage, yeah, put it back in, well, just remove it from play. Oh, but it's going to take it instead, okay. I, I suppose once you're kind of done with Rotom, when the when the loop has begun, you can always penny to bring Rotom back to your hand so that yep. it's less of a liability, especially against a deck where Brent can yeah, straight away the Rotom's gone. <laughs> and I think that's just because Nikolaus is realizing that Brent has eight in the loss zone, not long now until Brent's going to start actually attacking. Brent has, at this stage, just really bide their time and said, you know what, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do anything until I really can lay on the pressure there's no point it's not going to achieve me much in the long run and so Nicklaus just used that small window to go okay well I'm going to take away the one two prize option you've got it's actually really impactful I was chatting to Brent about this matchup before he came on and he said you want to try and take your first prizes if possible by bossing the Rotom so yeah. if you have something stuck in the active you can actually retreat right so now that won't be an option so now if anything does get stranded in the active the boss plus retreat will no longer be an option as Brent does play the Mirage Gate to get two energy onto the Giratina, so Shred now will be a KO. So we're going to start seeing prize cards being taken. Nicholas has to do something about this, because if he doesn't, uh, Brent will just go Shred, 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 and we'll be starting game two. Yeah, it's quite as simple as that, and that's exactly why Giratina has one of the better matchups into Bla Block Snorlax, yep. and the game doesn't quite stall as much as we've mm -hmm. seen in the past, and why it does give a more exhilarating stream experience for you all at home. <laughs> Yeah, this is definitely much more of a two and throw. We are going to see a Poke Gear going to grab that Misfortune Sisters. Now, if this Misfortune Sisters, if, if Nicolaus opts to play it, can start hitting switching options and maybe you can counter catch her in a Sableye, this could start to get a little bit dicey. Here we do to the Misfortune Sisters, though. Top five cards. Are we going to see some switching cards, Amy? Oh, I hope not for Brent's sake, but Ooh. I know Nicolaus wants to see them. Oh, okay, a Mirage, a Mirage Gate. Gate isn't too bad. You know, no. I actually think Brent has a lot of switching options in hand. They've kind of been yeah. compiling them. Mm -hmm. I think it's really clever. Generally speaking, they're safer in hand than yes. they are in deck. Oh, so. but speak of the counter catch-up, there we go. We're going to see if Brent does have them in hand, the switching cards, because that counter catch is going to bring up yeah. the little Sableye. And that's the thing. Once Brent takes the first prize card, that's when Nicklaus can use some of their yes. cards that they will have been holding nope. on to. Nope. Hey, Ooh. the triple hitter. Three for three. Three for three. There we go. And we see a, a pass. pass. Yep. So. Again, biding their time, and I think that's really clever. Both players are knowing that the pace of the game needs to be in their hands. Oh, so we see... 
a boss the going to the lost zone. I think, was that a double jet energy? No, it couldn't have been. Was, jet energy was, was one of the cards. It and was. It was a double boss. Oh, it was a switch card. So we did see two Ooh, switching cards there. Oh, beautiful. So here goes Giratina. Into the active. And we're going to see a shred here. And we're Brent going to take his second prize card. And that's one real good, nice thing about the Giratina matchup here is that you can just filter these cards into your hand via Chorus, via Abyss. So you can just hold them. Like, they're safe, like you said, once they're in yeah. the hand. Once they're in hand, they're relatively safe. So if you compile enough switch options to be able to just keep on going for long enough to take those six prizes, don't get me wrong, shredding through six individual prize cards for mm -hmm. Giratina is far from preferable. But at least it's an option. Yes. And Shred is so much more effective than having to loss zone your own energy. So keeping the Giratina as Giratina V, especially when your opponent isn't going to be attacking, is fantastic. As we are going to see the Pokes have another triple hit there. Brett Art tried to remove it from play via Path to the Peak, which was a really nice heads up play, but Nikolaus had the replacement. But Nikolaus' hand is actually massive right now, so it is. it's, it's not like really much of a surprise. It's much bigger than their deck. Pretty much they have every single card at their disposal, realistically that they could possibly want aside from those prize cards, which they Ooh. are aware of now, so. We're gonna see Nicholas play the Giacomo there, Ooh. discarding a special energy attached to each of your opponent's Pokemon, getting rid of a Jet energy attached to two Giratina V, and then a counter catch into a new Giratina V, and the Bravery Ooh, Charm's actually go. gonna push the Snorlax outside of range of Shred. Yeah, that's a really good move at this stage. However, there are 10 cards in the Lost Zone, so Sableye at this stage can True. put in some work, so we can, we can two hit KO this Snorlax, but I'm sure Niklaus has a plan to remove that damage in some way, shape, or form. You know we go again with a switch cart, but yeah, what will Brent decide to do? Because this is a tough decision. Does he evolve? The we Giratina? Could, we could see a Star Requiem. Brent did say that you do eventually have to start attacking with Star Requiem, but you might see a boss into the shred and force oh. yeah, force Nicholas to actually find another Pokemon to put down. And Beautiful. then next turn, if he doesn't, then you can announce Star Requiem and we can be starting game two. Love it. Absolutely beautiful. And yeah, we saw the Bravery Charm be a victim of Pokestop earlier. So yeah, we did. We know that that's probably the only one that's going to be floating Ooh. around for now. Whoop. The last card was a Cramomatic. Can Niklaus even... Okay, yes, yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. going to say, they haven't done it yet, but I imagine this is going to be two Snorlax and a Pidgeot. Yeah, you're going to have to start thinking about starting your loop at some point here, you know. Um, the deck is currently zero, there or now are. it's three. And that yeah. Pidgeot without vanishing wings, letting you shuffle it back into your deck. Only if it's on the bench. Only if it's on the bench. Mm -hmm. That is correct. So, uh, yeah, Niklaus needs to just keep rotating through with that Pidgeot, and they can... The, the Pidgeot will be able to kind of stop Niklaus from from decking out, so having zero cards left in their deck. So we are. We did see that Egg Incubator being played there. Flip a coin if it's such a deck for a basic Pokemon, pop it onto your bench, and then shuffle your deck. If it's Tails, put the Egg, in, at the egg Incubator back to the bottom. Um, and then we saw the double uh, Nest Ball there, going to get immediately refill the ranks of this Snorlax army. Yeah, the Snorlax aren't going down without a fight. They're all here for a good snoozy time. And the bench has once again got multiple Zs all set up. <laughs> well, we're going to see a, a Pokemon catcher. Here we go. Five. Oh, that's an odd number, so that's a fail. We don't get to pull that poor Giratina that keeps getting <laughs> dragged into the oh, active back no, again. It's do. happening anyway. We do. There he is. I suppose Nikolaus is just trying to use up their cards in the right order. Again, yes. sequencing yeah. is such a huge part of being a successful Snorlax player. Oh, oh we're going to see the double cross transceiver. I'd love to see that card. We haven't probably seen our stream for a very long time. If you play two cups of that at the same time, search your discard pile for a supporter and or Pokemon and put them straight onto your hand. And there we go, we have it on the side as well. I wasn't sure if we'd actually have it there, but we have it there ready to go. Love to see that. Oh, Miss Fortune Sisters back again. And this is the this is the crux of the loop, really, isn't yes. it? It's, it's the Silene, Miss Fortune Sisters, and keep going until Brent just has nothing left. And no hits oh, there. No. Brent's deck is looking pretty thin. It might well be that there are no targets left for Miss Fortune Sisters to to prey upon so maybe that is uh maybe that's in brent's fortune really yeah that they can't be, have their deck forcibly uh thinned for them 
be correct. I mean, if you have all the items in hand, they're fairly safe. Now, I think, yeah, we do see a switch cart, so Prentice can just immediately maneuver that guillotine out the active. We're going to see one attachment there to that bench guillotine of V. And we're going to see a V-Star. We are, so oh. we're going to see the Star Requiem here as Brent's going to go down to two. Oh, no, we're going to see a lost impact. I apologize Ooh. for 280. It's still plenty of damage. And yeah. because with lost impact, you can take the energy off any of your Pokemon. Having energy spread around the board from earlier has yeah, really, really sunk into Brent's benefit there. And Brent will be able to save that Star Requiem yeah, yeah. for a possible another bulkier Snorlax or just kind of to finish out the game. Or Mimikyu, right? I think we'll get around Mimikyu. Yes, indeed. So you want to try and hold on to that Star Requiem. If Nikolaus does put down a Mimikyu, you can just um, Star Requiem straight through that safeguard ability. As Nikolaus does start to turn off there by playing a uh, Power Pad, got to shuffle in two supporters from the discard pile back into there. I'd imagine Team Yo's Cheer is going to be one of them or Silene. Mm. It's going to be a a tough uphill struggle here for Niklaus as Brent seems to really have their board together. I'm really impressed with how he's clearly practiced a lot against this deck. Niklaus is a master of the Snorlax. And although <laughs> Snorlax itself is a sleepy Pokemon, the trainers who decide to go with this deck absolutely cannot be sleepy. No, you have to be on your game 100% of the time. We actually have an update from our other top four match. And uh, Fabricio versus Brennan, Fabricio has taken game one. So Fabricio with Mew is currently one game Ooh, up against Brennan. Mew, will mm, it be the top it, again? Will it be? Will Mew uh, will take home? Liverpool regionals and you want me to find out that's Oof. why watching this stream all the way to the end which I know you're going to do anyway because this is some high octane action why would you want to leave you don't want to leave stay here don't leave us no <laughs> don't you silly. don't want to miss out on all of the uh, Amy and Shay action after all that we've got Nick Laus and Brent giving us a great show here and bringing forward mm -hmm. that poor Giratina another time. <laughs> he must be, he must be motion sick. That Giratina. <laughs> he must be mo just getting shoved around here and everywhere. And I think there's, I think there's another switch card in Brent's hand, so Brent will be able to march down to one prize card. But I, th I mean, I think there's a switch card. They're just going to consult the lost zone, just trying to work out, you know, what resources I have left available. Very important. You know, I think a Star Axe player has to keep tabs of their own resources, obviously. But if you're playing against Norlax, you also have to be able to keep tabs on your um, resources as well. I think I definitely saw a switch card there. But Brent, you know, just trying to work out exactly what he has available to him. And seeing how many turns he's got left as well, I think he's debating playing a Colres there. Yeah, just having a look how many so. cards are actually left in his deck, so how long he can kind of stay against that Snorlax or whether it's going to have to be some tougher decisions of kind of thinning his own deck for a little bit. Because Snorlax is really wrestling away to win right now and <laughs> it's not... It's not looking hopeful. Especially since Giratina did use that Star Requiem that turn to actually just KO that Snorlax. We're going to see a Silene being Ooh. played here. Flip two coins for each head. Get a Discord for Discord and put it at the top of your deck. And we see one, one. head. Can't burn too much. Can't burn too much. You get one use of uh, Silene there. Okay, get show one card and put it to the top of your deck. It's going to be a, and it's going to be a counter catcher. Mm-hmm. There you yep. go. They're going to Poke Stop it. There we go. And there's the Poke Stop. And yep, Pidgeot. So you're going to have to play some sort of way to shuffling cards there. It's going to be that power pad, probably what Team Yell's cheer or Silene. I was going to say, yeah, Silene sounds like a really good shout again. And maybe both, you know, honestly. I'm not sure what other. Yep, yeah, there you go. There we are. I, I'm not sure what else I would personally put back in because I think Nicklaus at this stage is probably thinking, yeah, I, I don't think Misfortune Sisters can help me much more. Sydney's probably not going to be much more help. So, again, just pulling forward Pokemon that Niklaus is hoping Snorlax will just be able to stay in front of. An attack. Well, we're going to see a Lost turn. Mine if we don't see a switch. Lost, lost mine, for, mine. Lost Mine, 120 damage to the active. Now, this is really interesting because Niklaus is going to have to try and remove this damage, otherwise, he loses, right? So. Um, Oh, let's see what Nicholas can do. Nicholas is going to have to put another Pokemon down to Penny, surely. Yes. 
And then it's interesting, if you force Nicolas to penny, penny, that means he can't play, he can't be playing Silene or Team Yell Cheer. You can sort of force a loop. And I think we're going to see a concession oh. there as Brent <laughs> takes our game one here in our top four feature match. Sableye applying enough pressure and Brent goes 1-0 up. Uh, they say if you snooze, you lose. And you in go. this instance, Snorlax was just too sleepy and Brent Skiratina just ran all over them. And I really love seeing that Sableye late game pressure because if you can provide enough pressure on the Snorlax to where you can force your opponent to keep playing, you know, Penny or way to remove damage, it's as good as winning in that stage because Nicholas has to play Silene or Team Yell Cheer not to deck out. So if you can force to play Penny, that means funnily enough, the Snorlax player will be decking out in that scenario. Niklas quickly identified that, scooped them up, and now we're going to a game two. Yeah, it's a very unorthodox way of breaking your opponent's loop on yes. purpose. You are forcing them into a situation where they cannot continue the loop because they must deal with the threat on the board that you have laid. So although Snorlax wasn't KO'd, it didn't really matter. Breaking the loop is enough, and that's exactly what you've got to try and do against these really prolific stall decks and these kind of decks where they're trying to make you deck out as their win condition rather than actually taking any prize cards. You've just got to try and break down whatever they're trying to do, kind of beat them at their own game in a way. Yeah, like we've seen some players start to play Misfortune Sisters in other decks just to try and take advantage of Snorlax going down to such low deck size. But in that scenario, we mentioned it at the start of the game that Lost Mind is actually really good if you can get towards it to apply enough pressure there. So we're going to start our game two now. Brent Tonneson currently 1-0 up. The reminder, if Brent was to win this game, he finds himself in the finals here at Liverpool Regionals. Niklaus needs to win two games to get himself in the finals. And the winner of the finals will get that auto invitation to the World Championships. Ooh. Oh, goodness gracious me, though, I see a Giratina in the prize. Two, uh, yeah, a Giratina has oh, a full well. Giratina line and two Super Rod. Ooh. Ooh, and two copies of Cross Chance Seaver, a Snorlax and the Pidgeot. And the Pidgeot. Ooh, this is very, very risky. Oh, and open the Rotom V as well. That's not what you want to have in the active. Not at all. Nicolas will be able to use this and Heavy Ball to get yes. the Pidgeot out of the prize card. So I imagine they won't be too kind of upset at that. The loop of, with the Pidgeot is going to be able to be live. But as you say, the Rotom, I'm not loving that in the active in the beginning. No, that Rotom really doesn't want to be there. I'm just looking at uh, switching cards there for um, Nikolaus. I don't, I see one escape rope. I see one switch card. So that could be a little bit dicey there for Brent as he's going to start. Does lead a Confe though? which Brent did lead. The Confey was not a factor in the last round, so having a Confey here could come back to bite him. He's going to battle VIP pass for another Confey, though, and a Giratina V. Yeah, honestly, it's, it's just you can tell the difference of the matchup here. Brent is absolutely setting up as Giratina should. It's an incredibly clear line of action here, and... The Comfey, if you start one, you kind of might as well kind of go on as you intend to continue with managing to populate that loss zone. I think I prefer the Abyss Seeking kind yes. of um, route on this one. But if you start with the Comfey, there's very little you can do about it. And mm. like we saw with the Sableye's last game, you might as well lean into it. I think you're correct. Yeah, since like since you've led the confe, you might as well. I mean, there's not much difference between having one confe and two confe. You might as well just uh, get them into play. As we're going to see the Mirage get hit the lost zone uh, by the flower selecting two cards in lost zone there for Brent. Um, has that psychic energy in hand, and we're going to see a pass over to Nicholas. Now, can Nicholas actually get some extra Pokemon in play first of all? Oh, answer my question immediately. There with it that is. Nest ball. So let's see what Nikolaus can do. It's going to be Nikolaus's first deck search. So we'll be able to work out what's been prized and we'll be able to identify that Pidgeot and one copy of Snorlax are currently hiding there. Yeah, and the Hisuian Heavy Ball is only going to be able to get one of the two. I think yep. personally I would prioritize the Pidgeot, but we see from we saw from last game that Nikolaus still struggled with the amount of Snorlax they had. Mm. So that could really affect this game. It might mean that they have a much more difficult time against Brent, and it's not like last game, unfortunately, went their way. No, you are correct. But now that Nikolaus can target these Confei, maybe that could make life a little bit harder for Brent. I think this is a suboptimal way to play in the matchup for Brent. 
So Nick Glass will be trying his hardest to work himself out as well. I'm going to see that nest ball target, that all too familiar. Snorlax pop it straight on the bench. Yeah, I think that's the thing. At this point, both players have a non-optimal mm. start. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a slow start from both players. It'll just be who kind of breaks that chain. Mm -hmm. Oh, but we are going to see the perks up coming down. This could be a really important. One, I two, know. three. Oh. Snorlax. Oh, I suppose at least Niklaus has the super roll, but you really want to save yeah. that until later, especially not having a Snorlax because one is prized, which Niklaus, I'm certain, will have noticed in that deck search. I see an interesting decision here for Niklaus. Does that actually have the escape rope? Oh, not to play it because then Brent could promote the... Giratina V, so we're just going to see the instant charge there. But you're right, since Niklas now has one slot in the discard pile, one of the prize cards, got to be very efficient with Super Rod as we are going to see that Chorus experiment being used there for Brent. Look at the top five cards of your deck, put three in your hand and two into the lost zone. Oh, crumbs. I'm not sure how I feel about this on both sides. Brent's got a long way to go before they're capable of KOing a Rotom, though. There's only, what, this will be five cards in the lost zone. And if they use too many switch options on these Comfey now, they're going to struggle later when they need them to get out of Snorlax block trap. Yeah, interesting. We're going to see the retreat into the next confade. Do we see a switching card so you can maybe, I would say you've already attached for turn. So you're able to Abyss Seeking. So you can see probably a confade inactive and a pass. Yep, and we're going to see the pass over to Nikolaus and let's see what he can do. Oh no, top stacks a battle VIP pass. That would have been very useful last turn. Yeah, very, very useful indeed. Oh, but we are going for another nest ball. Possibly that second Snorlax might go down now. Nikhaus might choose to use the Super Rod when there's only two Snorlax in the discard pile just because of lack of resources. It's going to be really, 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 really tight here to make sure that both players are managing their resources well. Brent's best course of action for switching currently being manual retreat while Rotom's still stuck in the active for a little bit. Yep. But like you said earlier, Shay, really good observation that Niklaus very well does have the choice of using that escape rope right now, but is reluctant to use it while Brent doesn't have a populated loss zone. Yes, because then you can force, he can put the Giratina in the active, and then we can start. Brent can start plain sailing as he did in game one. So we're going to see that heavy ball being played there. Looks like it did grab a target. Didn't quite see what it was, unfortunately. I think was it the pitch up? We have to look at the hand now. Um, no, he went, oh, the the Snorlax. Snorlax. he went for the Snorlax. He I went apologize. for the Snorlax and immediately benched it. So Pidgeot is stuck in the prize cards for the remainder of the game. Niklaus is saying, I think I'm yeah. confident enough that I can use my resources well. But I don't need Pidgeot because Pidgeot is a little bit of a kind of, it, it's a bit of a crutch. It's yes. that if all else fails, I will always be able to loop this Pidgeot and I won't deck out. Yeah, and I think since Nicholas currently one game down, well, one game down, we'll have to try and win fast. And if you're going to win fast, using Pidgeot loop might not be the way to go. We did see a penny though on the active Rotom V, so that can put the Rotom V back on the bench and promote that Snorlax into the active. So that means that Confey now is being affected by the block, meaning it cannot retreat while that Snorlax is in the active. No, Comfey's got all tangled and can't move <laughs> while Snorlax is blocking the way, unfortunately. But we're back onto Brent's turn at this point, and we're going to have to see how he responds. Straight away with the flower selecting makes total sense. We've got one, oh, one switch option there, which is perfect, because uh, Countercatcher will never be active in this game. It, it's not possible. Uh, <laughs> there we go for the Mirage Gate. Now the Lost Zone has seven. And finally, more energy can start to come out of the deck and onto our Giratina friends. Uh, one energy for Comfey and one for Giratina. No, gonna get yeah, both on the Giratina. That would have been my choice as well. Gonna say because we could see. I mean, you could realistically see a V Star lost impact here if you really wanted. Shred would not be a KO since the Bravery Charm um, is in play there. So, but just, oh, we've actually, without no psychic energy on the Giratin, we won't be seeing a lost impact. Mm, no. No psychic, no go, unfortunately. 
Yeah, it won't be seeing a shred either because the shred has a psychic energy cost. So yep. just a ton of energy on the Giratina, maybe just front loading all your energy. So when you do decide to start using Lost Impact, you can just, you know, remove them from the active. Because uh, I guess whilst they're in play, since Nicolas doesn't play any energy disruption. Oh, oh. oh there we go. Psychic well, energy from hand. There you go. Sweet. That's perfect. Exactly. Oh, is this going to be a boss onto the Rotom V? Excellent. Allowing Comfe to get untangled. Retreat to the bench Ooh. using the energy. Oh, I like it. Aggressive. Let's go. Going for Lost Impact, discarding the water energy into the Lost Zone where they belong because we're not going to need them in this matchup. And what a turn that was there for Brent. Going to use that Lost Impact to carry that Rotom over to Niklas. Going to start some of that Pokey Stop. Going to get that Egg Incubator and that Power Pad. But Peonia will be sent to the discard pile. Now, Nicholas is going to have to start, you know, kind of try and gust something off and strand it because, oh, that's one way to do it. Here Pokemon we go. Catcher. Here we go. Oh, oh, and it was a five. No. Does he have another one? Uh, oh, I don't think so. I don't think we're going to have the flurry of coin flips we had last time. I could be wrong. That might be a Cramomatic. So let's see what we're going to do. Does Tough decisions. Tough decisions to be made. The, yeah, it is a Cramomatic. I think they're considering the. Crowmatic, a battle VIP pass there. And that would make sense because you know that isn't really terribly helpful right now. Here we go again. There we go. Roll Let's go. That dice. Oh. Oh, five again. Oh my goodness. So let's see another debate another in the Crowmatic. Right. Here we go. And then Nicholas, my son. Another five. A triple five. Can you guys in chat work out the probability of rolling three exact fives in a row? Because that's what we've just seen. God, they didn't sign up for a math lesson, no, Shay. they did. Well, well, Ross tried to put me on the spot earlier about math, so now I want the chat to get involved as well. Yeah, so. that's a good shout. I can't do that math, so <laughs> maybe you guys can. Yeah, maybe you guys can. I'm sure you've got some clever people there in chat. You can work out a pop beat of that. It looks like we're just going to see a, a consulting of the discard pile there. This is saying, I think they're saying, have you used Pokestop Raiders turn? I don't think they no, have. No, I don't think they have. Although we've oh, no, they did. No, they did because oh. they're the Peonia ah. got discarded, right? No, they yes. did use the Pokestop already. You are absolutely right. I think uh, it's a weird thing because Pokestop has been used so yeah. frequently across this event that it all becomes a blur. Oh, speaking of a blur, if there's any special energy or jet energy in that hand, they could be coming a blur real soon with that Sydney getting uh, taken off that pokey gear. I don't think Brent actually has any targets for that in hand, well, any of the special energy at the very least. But it looks like, oh, we're going to see the skate work first, and that's awkward because, you know, uh, Brent Ooh. just wants to keep attacking now. Yeah. There is only nine in the Lost Zone, so one Abyss Seeking, but at the same time, I suppose Flower Selecting is also no different. Oh, it is that Sydney? I don't think there's a Jet Energy. Is there any, even, even any targets I love the, there? I love the Brent put the Switch card to the front, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can see that. Yeah, that's the you first go. card you're going to see. <laughs> and yep, that was a fail on the Sydney. There was no Special Energy Tool cards or Stadium. So over to Brent. They had that Rock Sun. I tell you what, well, that Rock Sun will not be getting played. Um, so we're going to see a Coruscant Experiment instead. Okay, there's at least one obvious target there for the discard, uh, for the Lost Zone, sorry. There we go, yeah. Lost Zone, the Battle VIP pass. Look um, at all the switching cards in the hand. Absolutely bonkers. And again, as we assessed earlier, they are safest in the hand, so we're not upset. We've got their three wow. energy back into the deck. So efficient, getting the Lovely. triple. They're going to Mirage, get Mirage them straight Gate. back into place. We're going to see another... I imagine switch car lost impact and get that Snorlax out the way. Ooh, lovely. Plenty of energy again. Brent's just having a little look through while they're in there, making sure that they've got enough energy to continue attacking. That's the scary part when you choose to go to the Giratina Vista, is that a, Snor a clever, clever Snorlax player can eventually run you out of energy entirely and it all end up in the loss zone, lost until the end of the game. <laughs> As we do see the switch cart being played there, so we're going to see a lost impact here, I would imagine. Path to the peak like that, going to stop any potential poke stop or even instant charge next turn. And there is the lost impact from Brent, going to go down to three prize cards left. What can Nikolaus do? Nikolaus brings forward Snorlax for some more lax and straight on <laughs> with a Pokestop back down again. And here Oop. we go, Palpad, Pokegear oh. and Arvin. Goodbye to the Arvin, but Pokegear is quite a nice choice right here. We've used a lot of supporters no. and another Arvin in hand. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Counter catcher. And, and a, a Bravery big, yeah. Charm. Bravery Charm, great choice right here. Uh, 
kind of might force Brent to use that V-Star move early. And I yeah. really like the assessment from earlier that the Mimikyu is a lingering moment. It and is. Brent has not seen that Mimikyu. No. Brent doesn't know that Mimikyu exists. We're going to and see counter catcher into the comp fader. I worry. I worry for Brent with that Mimikyu. Yeah, Mimikyu. That Mimikyu can be game, and this is going to see a pass there. We're going to see a flower selected. Battle VIP pass. See you later. Yeah, um, got a Nestle. Nestle playing the Nestle as well. Is this just a consult resource? I don't think you bench anything here, right? No, I wouldn't maybe, have said so. I say, maybe Cram Rants, you can just. Oh no, or Comfy either. Oh no, it would be even worse if Brent were to accidentally bench lock themselves for anyone new. That just means that you have filled your mm. bench. You're only allowed five Pokemon on the bench and one in your active. The way I always think about it to remember is that in the video games i'm only allowed six pokemon in my party total and it's the yep. same here in the trading card game six total and they should have any ways of bolstering that by a sky field or eternal zone from eternity's v-max they're not in form now so i have to worry about that as we see a switch car into that giratina v-star path to the peak Ooh. again now, do we have to see another energy or otherwise it might be a star of requiem oh, this turn and it requiem. is okay oh the mimicry really scares me here shay because what choices did brent have i mean it's Sableye on nothing, but mm. I'm not sure the energy's there, you know? Yeah, we've seen Lost Impact be used a lot, so that Mimikyu could become a threat. Mimikyu has that safeguard ability, preventing all damage done to it via your opponent's EX or um, V Pokemon, so that could be a problem. Brent does play a multitude of one prize Pokemon to attack into it, but at the minute, only has Comfey down, and well, that's not very good. You have to start trying to get energy onto that bench Giratina V to use Shred, but you've already lost a lot of them, so that's definitely an interesting wrinkle we have to keep an eye on. Very much so. That was a misfortune, sisters. And I'm not sure what choices Niklaus has here. It looks like they are consulting their discard pile to check what resources are all used up. This might be it. If they can't get another Pokemon out or can't do anything of value to move Brent's Pokemon around, Brent just needs that one more energy to take out this Snorlax, and it is game over. I love that from the power pad. Going to take that uh, Sydney and the Iono. Um, that Sydney, I think Nicholas has worked out. We haven't seen many jet energy yet, so chances are you're going to start drawing into them now. So let me use that Sydney to try and fire that off at some point and remove those jet energy before they have a chance to be used. So let's see what else Nicholas can do here. We're going to see another uh, the Poke Gear going to try and find Iona or Bosses. Or as I imagine, oh, I think was that a fail? Uh, I think there oh, is. Oh, no, Misfortune the, uh, Sisters. Misfortune Sisters. They have already played a supporter this turn though so nothing was going to be of help right this moment oh did it oh, i apologize i didn't realize he played a supporter this turn oh i was pretty sure i thought they played a misfortune sisters i think I he took it off a pokey gear i think oh i yes. see yeah so and uh, there we go here's the mm, misfortune sisters there's the misfortune sisters One. it's a shame really because there's not there's not much you can do with that. Think, was that a fail or uh, they got oh, no, one. one counter? I mean, that's fine. But I mean, that's going to be never being used there no, for Brent. It's a thin, it thinning thin, the deck, but thin. not enough. Wait, is he going to? Has Nicholas got another bench Pokemon to put down? That's honestly what I'm Has worried about. Has he got about. another Pokemon I to put down? I don't think he does. I, I honestly, I don't think he does. So if Brent can switch out of this oh, comfy, and which they can, we know they my can. Goodness. I think this is it. Can Brent switch? Oh, the jet energy and Brent Tonneson is going to win <gasps> our, our top four feature match here and he will secure himself a place in the finals. Giratina. Congratulations to him. Giratina back in the finals of yet another yeah. regional championships. We've had a few in a row now. We're not stopping on this Giratina train to the Lost Zone. Yeah, all aboard that Lost Zone train, baby. <laughs> Choo choo! <laughs> as it finds itself in the final. Again, that's three events in a row now, right? Right? It's insane! Mm. I, could anyone think of a, of a best deck in format other than Giratina? I think, I think it's undeniable at this point. Let's, I, it could win the day. Yeah, I mean, of course, it's in the final now, uh, so of course it can. And yeah, that would be what? Then winning three in a row as well at that point, Ooh, I believe. Oh, that's crazy. Ooh, wow. I, don't, I, have, I don't think that's happened in a long time, you know, a deck taking it. I think Mew. 
might have been the last one that took kind of multiple maybe. regionals by storm in a row. Maybe three in a row. Maybe Silver Tempest Lugia, I imagine, might have done maybe. that as well. Ooh. But doesn't happen too Not often. Too and Brent secured himself a place in the finals, coming all the way from Australia. But maximum commiserations there to Nick Klaus. I think played pretty well, all things considered. But when you're against uh, the heart, when you're against your worst matchup, mm -hmm. and that matchup also happens to be the best deck in format can get a little bit dicey. Absolutely, it can. I am absolutely flabbergasted that we've got Giratina back again in a finals. The, it, the game was so perfectly played, though. Uh, it is one of Snorlax's worst matchups. That game, game three was really unfortunate. I was, it was a game two, wasn't game it? Game oh two, my gosh. yeah, we get to a game three. I was so fixated, you know, it just 